Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will look at uh, k nearest neighbors, one of the uh, more simple uh, classification algorithms. All the uh, figures, uh, graphs, and illustrations in this uh, in these slides that we are going to see are provided by Intel software. So let's look at this data set. It has two features. It's a cancer uh, data set. Uh, one one feature is the number of malignant nodes. So these are the cancerous uh, lumps or um, lesions that are seen in the patient, maybe in the images. The other feature is the age of the patient and what we are trying to look at is the uh, survival of the patient. So, did that patient survive or not? Okay. So, this is one piece of the data set. So, all the uh, red points correspond to patients who did not survive and all the blue points correspond to the or the blue um, spheres correspond to the uh, patients who survived. Okay. So, what we want to do is to predict when a new patient comes in, new patient data comes in. So, we have the age of the patient and the number of malignant modules for that patient and let us say it falls here in this data set and we want to predict whether the patient will survive or not. Okay. So, um, how, how does KNS neighbor go uh, algorithm go, up, go about doing that? Okay. So, um, it has one hyperparameter if you can call it, it is the neighborhood count called K that is why it is called K nearest neighbor. So, so, what we do is we look at the neighborhood of this point that where we are, uh, where this uh, te test data is uh, located and let us say we consider only one neighbor, okay. one neighbor in the sense we, we consider the nearest neighbor, right? the nearest neighbor. We will later on see what, what do you mean by nearest neighbor, but we assume that we have some way of figuring out the nearest neighbor and so in this case the nearest neighbor is a red circle which uh, red sphere which uh, which represents a uh, patient who did not survive. So, hence we classify this patient as not uh, was not survived. Okay. So, this is when k equal to 1. So, we can also see when k equal to 2 we have 2 uh, points which are closest to it in some sense and one of them is blue the other is red. So, then it is a tie so it is difficult to classify it that way. Then we consider let us say 3 nearest neighbors, wherein uh, 3 of the nearest neighbors out of which 2 says that uh, the patient will survive and 1 says the patient will not. So, then if we take the maximum vote, uh, we take the majority vote and then we can say that okay, the new data, data patient that came in uh, indicates that the patient will survive. Okay. So, we can of course, keep increasing the number of neighbors in this fashion and in this case again when we consider 4 nearest neighbors, we will see that. 3 out of the 4 points correspond to patients who survived. So, hence we can safely say that the patient will survive, I mean at least predict that the patient will survive. Okay. So, uh, this is the uh, basic algorithm. So, what we have are the 2 parameters, one is the k value which tells you how many points to consider. Here when you say points to consider, we are only looking at the training data points. right? So, we are given a data set which we consider as a training data set and we will only look at uh, when, when a new uh, data point comes in, test data point comes in, when we say distance, we are looking at only distance to the uh, points which are present in the training data. So, it is not like continuum, it is only depends on how much training points you have. Okay. So, in that sense, there are only two parameters here, one is the uh, uh, k okay, and the other one is the distance metric. Okay. So, we will see how to choose k and what kind of distance metrics are typically used. Okay. So, we will consider the two extreme cases here, when we consider only one neighbor at a time and the other where we consider all the neighbors. When I say all, it means the entire training data set and not the continuum as the graph implies. Okay. So, now if we consider only one um, data point at a time, then what we do is we, we can see that you know if you look at this particular plot, there is a bunch of uh, red points here which can indicate the patient did, uh, corresponding to patients who did not survive a bunch of blue points here which correspond to patients that survive and there is an odd blue and red data point here. So, what do this curve imply? So, this is the decision boundary. So, this, this red curve or we can look at it as the blue curve whichever we want to look at it, uh, it is the decision boundary which means that anything to the one side of the boundary means that uh, all test points that fall on that on this side of the boundary means the patient will not survive and all test points that form or fall on this side of the boundary means the patient will survive. So, it depends on, so we draw this boundary by looking at the distance to the first nearest neighbor. Okay. So, which all this says that if there is a data point somewhere here very close to the boundary red boundary, uh, 
that that is the uh, and we, if you put any all the data points very close to the red boundary all these data points would correspond to patients who will not survive and, and of course, we move on to the other side it will correspond to data points okay, where the patient uh, will not survive. Okay. So, we can actually construct this particular uh, decision boundary by uh, by, by changing the number of nearest neighbors. So, what will, what will happen if we consider all the data points in the sense I mean, instead of considering one neighbor we consider uh, let us say in this case this has about I think uh, close 30 odd uh, points okay. and we consider all the 30 points as neighbors and then see if we do that then by virtue of there being more patients in the data set who survived than those who did not survive any decision any point you throw in will be uh, any uh, data point corresp uh, corresponding to a patient thrown in will uh, will give the result that the patient will survive. Okay. So, this is a parameter that we will have to learn to tune. Okay. So, this is the extreme cases k equal to 1 we are considering only one neighbor at a time again remember when I say neighbor we are only talking about the training data points that are made available to you. So, now how, uh, the question is how do we choose this k right. So, then um, the, that is solved by then by splitting your data into training validation and testing. So, maybe in the ratio 70 20 percent and 10 percent of your data. Okay. Um, so, based on uh, based on their performance in the validation data for a particular choice of k you can then decide on that choose that k. So, for instance you can vary k given given your split of your training data set you can vary the value of k maybe you can go from 1 to like maybe 10 or 100 whichever depending on the size of your data set and find out for uh, for the k value for which you get very good performance on your validation data set and of course, you, get, you can go ahead and do the testing on it. The other technique would be to try out n fold cross validation right. Here you will choose different splits of your data into training testing and validation or you can just do training and testing and, uh, and then of course, vary, vary k for each of the spl uh, splits and, and see uh, for the split k for k, k value for which you get a, a, a low variance and reasonably good accuracy. So, this is your standard um, way of uh, making sure that you do not overfit. Okay. So, because it is very easy to overfit with k nearest neighbors like we saw here we just do k equal to 1 you can you can get a very sharp boundary, but of course, uh, uh, most data that, that means that you will be overfitting. So, by splitting your data into training validation and testing you can figure out uh, the value of k using your validation uh, data set or by doing n fold cross validation and for uh, every fold you can try out different values of k and find out the value of k for which you get low variance and reasonably high accuracy. So, this is uh, of course, a very simple uh, method in the sense that you do not actually do any training I mean there is uh, you just uh, load all the data into memory that is of course, a problem when the data sites becomes very large. So, you would consider all the data points at the same time. Uh, that is of course, you mean after you split it into training testing and validation and then you just find out the nearest neighbor. Okay. So, one more thing to clarify is what do you mean by nearest neighbor. So, typically we will use the Euclidean distance. So, in this case let us say we have these two features number of malignant nodes and age. So, if you want to figure out a distance between your test data point and one of the training data points you just have to calculate the difference uh, between the feature values square them and add them take the square root of course. So, of course, remember that when we do this we have to make sure that we do data normalization. This you should understand and goes without saying because if you look at the number of malignant nodes it is going to be different in a sense the range of these of these axis is going to be different from the range of the age axis. Okay. So, then it makes sense to normalize them to make them more meaningful. So, you do the, you can do the Euclidean distance provided that you have done the data normalization um, and in which case the Euclidean distance would make sense to some to some extent. Of course, we can also uh, so that is the L 2 distance this is the L 1 distance we can consider wherein which is just the sum of the absolute values of the difference between the feature values. Once again here in this case again we expect uh, that data normalization has to be done before uh, we can compute these metrics. Okay. We can also do multi class classification using um, k nearest neighbors of course, it is the same procedure and there is again the possibility of tie that can happen. Okay. So, then you have to vary k to the point where this ties do not happen that often. 
So, to summarize we have looked at the k nearest neighbors algorithms one of the simpler algorithms and in many cases uh, it will work very well okay, depending on your data. Uh, the basic principle is that you load the entire uh, data set along with its features of course, after splitting into the training validation and testing and for a new incoming data point you find out of course, this is a supervised technique. So, you actually know the ground truth. So, for a new incoming data point you find out uh, you decide the nearest neighbors to consider. So, you find out the k nearest neighbors and do a majority voting among them to find out the class to which your test data belongs to. Okay. So, we will look at other uh, classification algorithms in machine learning in the other uh, next few lectures. Thank you.